and we are live what's up everybody this is peter aka not ghost stories back with another episode of creators unplugged this is season three episode two and today we have none other than the biggest halo br adversary uh than k Stu. hey Welcome to the show. I respect that. I respect that. Uh, I respect that introduction. Um, totally, you know, without <laughs> any kind of uh, insider authority or no, you know, no one knows what he's talking about. Um, Halo still needs a mm. BR, and no. uh, you know, that's that's where most of the world might be at. But uh, you, you know, you've that's the hill you're dying on. That's fine. Yeah, that, I'll, that's I'll fine. Be a, I'll be a contrarian. That's fine. That's you know, fine. not you know, it's sometimes better to be a leader than a follower. You know, I mean, what can I say? Is it? You know, I'll put it this way. They can work on a BR. I have no problems with them working on a BR, but they got to fix everything else first. Then, then by all means, go for it. Yeah. Um, Until then, now nah, you got, y'all got some time before that. <laughs> um, but Here you before, gotta be heated. Let's go. Before we get started, I knew it would be. Before we get started, uh, why don't you tell the people uh, a little bit about yourself as far as like any specific projects you're working on, um, your most active uh, platforms, uh, you know, if you're working or playing any games specifically, um, or or doing any particular projects, usually when I ask people this, you know, if they have a podcast, they'd promote that, or um, you know, if they have uh, like a business, they'd want to promote that as well. But just uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. I mean, I also I have a podcast. I've been me and my co-host, we've been slacking on that just because we've both been very busy. But you know, it's just it's called the Kill Cam Podcast, and we just talk about kind of all things gaming usually more industry related and my co-host has like a background and he's a cpa so he deals with you know finance and stuff like that so we we touch on you know quarterly reports and you know the money aspect of it because that's always an interesting thing to see considering you know gaming's like the biggest form of entertainment nowadays or like most profiting form of entertainment so right that's always fun and then i still i do my occasional streams on uh lol case too i have I've been meaning I've I'm sitting on like gigs worth of clips that I've just been meaning to upload to my YouTube. But every time I go to make a video and I just see like a folder full of clips, it's so overwhelming. Stop like, taking oh. clips. I'm, Stop <laughs> clipping stuff. I can't help it. Like sometimes something funny or cool happens. I'm like, well, let me just clip that. And then I'm like, oh, I'll make that into a video. And then Stop. it's like, I'll open up, Stop. I'll open up like my Counter-Strike folder and it's like 300 files. And I'm like, Damn, I really don't want to sit through those. And or out. here's an idea. Don't don't say it. Here's an idea. Don't say it. <laughs> you could go into your clip folder and just grab five random clips and then force yourself to make a video with those clips. That could be really interesting. Just just grab five clips, no context, and be like, "All right, we're we're putting these together somehow." All right, and then you'd have to figure out how to tie them all into the next one. And oh, then man, maybe try to find common ground between all of them and, and then label it as such. So it's that, that like some be, continuity. You know what? I might have to just do that because it's like, yeah, it is, it is, you know, a bit overwhelming to look at all of them. It's like, yeah, but maybe if I just grab five at a time and then once I've done with them, move them out of that folder and just start dwindling that them. folder down. Just delete them. Yeah. Get rid I, of do them. Need, I do need to delete them. I'd clear up so much space on my hard drive. You could need space for the Halo BR, which okay. is... That's going to be a huge game, obviously. Well, I need I need space. Let's be real. I need space for any game because you know even like the most minuscule of games now is like fifty gigs. So Dude, what it was a uh, uh, there was a game that just came out that was like a hundred gigs. It needed a hundred gigs of space, but it wasn't. That's, that doesn't narrow it down much. At no, but all. it like wasn't. Oh, what was it? It wasn't a game that you would think would take a hundred gigs of space. You're like, hey, uh, this is what oh, it's going to take. All in order. Which one? All in order, oh, or not? All in order, that? um, Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor, I think, needed 150, and I was like, "How? How does this game need that much?" <sighs> I thought it might be like Street Fighter. I don't know. I Maybe it is Street I Fighter. I don't know. I can't remember, but it was something like that. I just looked it up on Steam right now. Yeah, Jedi Survivor, 155 gigs of space Jesus. needed for it. How, I'm how sorry, big is that game? Like, I don't know. That's the thing is, it's like GTA and like Red Dead are like right at like 100 gigs, a little over, and it's like. That's a full blown city, like a living, breathing city. And it's like, you know, Jedi Survivor, I'm sure it's great. And, you know, I'll play it after the patches are fixed, but it's like, you know, for 155 gigs, I better be able to explore like a planet in its entirety, not just a level. But, but they have know. a, you played the first one, yeah? 
Mm-hmm. They have, great game. Yeah, they have a, a it, was, it was an awesome, I loved it. Uh, but they have a bunch of different planets, but I guess yeah. none of it's really open world. I will say the map system's not my favorite. Uh, I really don't like maps where you have to sit between levels. It's very Star Wars, though. It's very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. It's, it's very, uh, you should check out this old school Star Wars game called Knights of the Old Republic. There's a lot oh, of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, God, I, I had more patience. Game. I had more patience when I was twelve. Did you? I see. 15. I have. I feel like I have. I have more patience now. I feel like you know, back Ooh. when I was twelve, I was like, "Games." Go. I honestly, when I got Kotor, like I just saw the back of it, and I thought it was just going to be kind of like um, oh, what's that other game called? Uh, like Jedi Academy, like you know, kind of just like a beat 'em up hack and slash yeah, kind yeah. of game. And when I started playing it, and it was kind of like this ARPG like styled game at first, I was like, "Wow, this sucks." But like I got it, so I stuck with it, and now it's become like one of my most replayed games ever. <laughs> Dude, it's it's, like, it's it's amazing. So good. It's amazing. I, I hate that. I, I think that the remake was. I don't. I don't know if it was officially canceled, but I saw articles that said it. It was pretty much all but canceled, and I'm like, don't. Wait, don't why? Do that, man. I don't know. That the remake has been up and down in limbo for years, and part of me like doesn't want them to remake it because i feel like if they remade it they would change the aspect not aspect uh like style i feel like they would make it that more you know actiony style that's like no keep it like keep it as true just update the graphics you know maybe make the ui and animations and stuff a little better but it's like please keep it as like true to the original as you can it that depends. would be like, if done well know. would have to be one of the most successful sequels ever it's I don't know, man. Right? Remakes. That's the thing too. Is it's like I, I I mean not even remake, but if they've ever made two, they made a Kotor too. Oh wait. Yeah, the Sith Lords. What am I thinking of? Yeah. Okay, but there's only two, right? Yeah, and, okay. and the Sith Lords. Like there was a a big amount of like there was a huge amount of content that was cut out of it. So like it was kind of an incomplete release, but if you play it on PC, they have like the it's called like the restoration mod that essentially puts back all that cut content in, makes the game way better. But restoration it's like, yeah, for, mod. I think it's called the rest like the the or, it was a something mod. Essentially, it, it replaced all the cut content. How would they? Which why would you even cut? I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't fully complete. It was like almost complete and then i guess because of time constraints you know to release the game on time they were like fuck it it's not fixed or it's not complete just take this whole part out and dude i remember playing that game so much i love so, kotor man so much and it, it blows my mind because it's like a lot of people because i mean obviously when you mention star wars game everyone's like battlefront which you know what that's fine battlefront i mean the amount of like land parties I've had I had with friends when I was younger playing, like you know Battlefront One, Battlefront Two, that, that's like on like Halo levels of fun. But it's like you know when I talk to those same people, I'm like yeah, do y'all play Kotor? And they're like, what's that? And it's like, man, that hurts to hear. <laughs> like that's single player stuff, you know. It's it's I like single player games. Maybe because no land, land I was an only the... child, oh, like it's not like I had siblings to play games with, so like right. I like single player games more. Or if it was a multiplayer game, if I could put bots on it, like in James Bond Nightfire, a game that needs to be remade more than any other game out there. What? What? More so than Backyard Sports? Man, I'm Get sorry. Get in line. I, Get in line. I, okay. I have been, I, every like it happens like every like six months, I'll just get in this mindset where I just start shilling Nightfire, and it's like <laughs> I guess I've been. It's so good. Have you? Okay. Before anything, have you played it? Uh, yes, and I'll say, and I'll prove it because there was a suitcase gun called the Ronin. Oh, I love the Ronin. It was okay, so yeah. overpowered and, that's, and annoying. And that's how I approve it because um, there's also like a, I'm trying to think of, uh, there was, was, I remember the Ronin specifically. I also remember this, this snowy multiplayer map that had like train, not train cars, but the. Um, oh, the sky rails. Yes, 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 yes. So there was two. There was the one with like the gondola that went across the canyon. Or are you talking about the one that like there was like a church on like the top of the hill? I think and, it's like, the gondola that I'm thinking of. Yeah. All the maps on that game were good. The whole game was so good. And it's like that was one of those games where it's like, you know, if my friends were like, oh, okay, like we got to go home. It's nighttime. 
I would just keep playing Nightfire, just turn on the bots and keep playing. And that sounds a lot sadder the the more I say that out loud. Nightfire was really... Was that the second game in the installment of that Low 17? Um, I guess because Agent Under Fire was the one before that. And Agent Under Fire was pretty cool. Agent Under Fire. I mean, that game was that game was pretty jank, but like in a fun way. Did that also have a Ronin? Uh, no, it didn't have a Ronin, but it had this gun. I think it was called the Photon Cannon. It would shoot like these heat-seeking plasma balls that, like, pretty much it was like fire and forget units to kill whoever. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! I can't. I for, totally forgot about this game. I played yeah, on me and GameCube. My, That's right. Yeah, it was on GameCube, P- PS2, and X. But yeah, my when me and my friends would play, we banned the Photon Cannon uses because we're like, this is this is bullshit. <laughs> I totally forgot about this game. It's so crazy. You could but remake I, a lot of the old James Bond games and I'd be so happy. They were so much I don't fun. know if it would be popular. Like do you think James Bond just as a franchise is kind of on the way out? I think so, which kind of sucks. Like maybe like it's just like that whole like spy era cuz it's like you know you think about like the 90s and 2000s you had a lot of like these espionage spy like action movies. Okay. The 90s was the best time for action thrillers. Oh, yeah. Late 90s, early 2000s, thinking like Con Air, Speed, yeah. uh, anything with, with Harrison Ford 90s? in it. What's those that? Late 90s, early t- I mean, I, I'm, all, I'm very bad with time judgment, but are those late 90s? I thought those were more early 90s, like Speed. I thought that was... Con Air was 97. Damn, I'm really bad with time then. Speed was 94, so that'd be early 90s. Okay. Uh, but all the Harrison Ford movies, like okay, all of yeah. those, like John Grisham type books that were converted into or like were adapted into movies, um, like all the like. Was it Harrison Ford? Was he the one? He was he in Air Force One? Yeah. Get off Air my Force, plane. Air Force One smacks. So a, good. It's such a good ass movie, and it's like no one ever like you know. I mean, obviously with Harrison Ford, it's like you know Han Solo, Indiana Jones, but it's like. But what about the Air Force One, man? Like he's the he's the president. Like get off my plane. Dude, it's just such a great. <laughs> I might have to go watch that movie this week. Oh, and I'm I, like, I haven't seen it in guy? so long. Dude, I think the bad guy in Air Force One was it? Um, not Ed Norton. I think it was. Uh, it was Gary. Was it Gary Oldman? It might be. I think it's um, Gary Oldman. Let me see. Yep. Gary Oldman, he was. I'm looking. How at good it, is yeah. that? Glenn Close Dude. was in it. Uh, the guy William from H. Macy. The, oh my god, I forgot. William he was H. Macy. It. Yeah. What Dude. a what a movie. Yeah, yeah. Then it's like yeah, it's showing like the related movies. There's Con Air '97. Damn. Yeah. That whole that whole all of those movies slapped so hard. The action was so good and so ridiculous. Like all the plots were hilarious. It was just so good. They were so well made. Speaking of, so it's kind of related, kind of not, since we're talking about, um, like, action movies, like, late 90s and stuff like that. And this even ties into gaming, too, because a game just recently came out for it. Do you ever watch Starship Troopers? Yes. So, I don't know if you saw, but they made that game Starship Troopers Extermination. Okay. Uh, a person in my stream last night was talking about it, steve he was talking about it um it's for it's, it's really, four player co-op right it's 16 player co-op it what yeah it, well so it's like there's like five squads of there's like five squads that you could pick between you can have a party of up to 16 people but like you know it's 16 players and it's like depending there's only two modes the mode i like to play it's called arc and essentially you have to like you know you find your base and then it's like you have to get ore which is what you use to like build fortifications and gas which is used to power the ark so it's like you know you try and farm a lot of ore so that you can build you know all the walls turrets ammo and stuff like that and then once you get all the gas and like the ark has to do its data upload the base just gets swarmed by bugs and you have to like hold out for just like five minutes against like a massive horde is it first person yeah, it's a first person shooter slash like beast builder. Oh, I love it. I mean, granted, I'm also a very I'm a very big Starship Troopers fan. And like you go into that game and everyone's just like in like all chat or proximity chat just yelling out oh quotes from Starship Troopers <laughs> and like 
I, I love it. <laughs> so it's it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like the first like couple days that game came out, it was like every all 16 players were just screaming quotes to the movie. And I was just like, yeah, this is about exactly what I expected from this game and community. Uh, I kind of love it. Oh, it's awesome. And it's like, you know, like the game's like 20 bucks at most. And it's like, you know, I got my money's worth out of it already. I think it's awesome. But it's just like, you know, it's an easy concept. Just put a shitload of bugs on screen and go crazy. Dude, it, but that's, but like, it's like one of those mindless games where it's like, hey, do you guys want to have a couple beers and play Starship Troopers and just see how far we can go? And like, no one really cares if you die and lose because no one's taking it that seriously. But it is fun and entertaining. Like, oh, yeah. The graphics aren't going to be the best. The gameplay is probably not going to be the best, but they make it simple, and that's why it's fun. You're gonna have that's a- the thing is it's like yeah, I mean you you get what you pay for. It's like you know you're paying like twenty bucks. You're not gonna get intricate levels. It's like you got you know your two weapons, like two perks, and you just shoot bugs. Like that's that's pretty much all it comes down to. But it's like it is really fun, and like I said, I'm very biased to the movie. It's like you know after the game came out, I went and rewatched the movie, and it's still a great movie to this day. Of I course still- it is. Denise Richards. Uh, that's all I remember. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I'm Ooh. I'm a I'm a dizzy I'm a dizzy stan. Oh, dizzy Flores. Yeah, the, the character. Yeah, dizzy was what's up. We also talked about that movie had like a pretty like stacked cast. Yeah, like, Neil Patrick Harris. First of all, they all look like Street Fighter characters that was, that was kind of the point like the when he when he made that movie he wanted he didn't want you know typical soldier looking dudes he wanted like model looking people michael ironside hell yeah michael ironside and neil patrick harris clancy brown jake Busey. i mean like dude the the movie was stacked dean norris casper like van dien michael ironside movie. dude what happened Michael to Splinter Iron Cell? Signs. What happened to Splinter Cell? Was Are we that? done? Oh yeah! Didn't they? He's didn't the voice, they isn't he? What's that? He's the voice of Sam, of the main character, right? I think so. Yeah. I was thinking of Michael Keaton, but I was like, no, that's Solid Snake. Yeah. He, yeah. What happened to Splinter Cell? Yeah, they they announced like I don't know if it was a remake or a new one, but they announced they showed like that teaser trailer like what two three years ago at E three, and then we haven't heard anything since. I'm Although, speaking of speaking of Solid Snake, did you see that they're remaking Snake Eater? I did. I watched the PlayStation uh, showcase. I plan on watching the Xbox showcase. Uh, it's pretty hopes- rad that they're remaking Snake Eater. I'll say this, uh, the foam game looks like a straight rip off of Splatoon. Oh yeah. Foam was it foam foam stars? Foam like stars. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Splatoon two. Or three, I guess. Nick was telling me that PlayStation sometimes gets dogged on because every showcase is third person over the shoulder adventure games. You find that to be true? Um so it's like, you know, I, I'm very critical of like Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. I have my things to say, but it's like, I will say it's like, yeah, I get what Nick's saying about that. But at the same time, they kind of make it work. I mean, if you look at like all of like Sony and like I'm not saying they're bad. You know, I'm not okay. saying their games are bad. Okay, so okay. I, that's, that's what I thought you were getting as that they were like, I was like, well, let's let's look at it. It's like they kind of have a track rate. Like, does it get a little old and bland? Yeah, maybe I'd like to see something new, but it's like, I think Sony's kind of just like in there. Hey, we know this will work. Do it, phase. Uh, I don't like that phase. That's kind of the phase we're at in gaming. I've been I've been watching like, well, it's like I don't even want to say like in gaming. Like, I want to say in like you know movies and games and just entertainment as a whole because it's like I listen to like I usually listen to like video essays when I'm working and like I like listening to retrospectives and it's like you know retrospectives on movies and games and stuff like that and it's like. I'm sure if you've listened to him too, you'll see you've seen comments or stuff along the lines where people would be like, you know, games back then were made with like passion and heart and mind instead of money. And like movies were made with, you know, the fans and entertainment instead of money. It's like, I'm kind of getting that. Like at first I used to just be like hurt or like people, people are pissy, but it's like the more I hear it and the more I kind of see, you know, games and movies now as opposed to back then, I'm like, no, yeah, there's actually some merit in what they're saying. Cause it's like, 
yeah it, games don't like they just feel like they're just trying to like you know check the boxes and they're like all right we checked all the boxes send it out they but they can't even check the, all the boxes uh, yeah that's because a good look point how many, they're not even checking all look the boxes how many, and i'm gonna say this dumb like we talk about how <sighs> shitty Gollum. Was. how do you how i'm sorry but like how how do you release that I at least talking, movies I'd be rolling in my grave right now. At least movies are complete, even though they're bad. Yeah, it's like the movie might be kind of trashy and bleh, but it's like at least it's a finished. At product. least it's done. Yeah, no, I I knew Gollum was gonna be rough, but when I started seeing the clips and the reviews, I I never would have expected there, it to be as bad as it was. There's a great TikTok account called like. Gaming with Dan or Dan. Yes. Dan's game. Have you seen this guy? Dan's game. Yeah. Oh my God. I, and, me and oh, my buddy dude. use his TikTok. We, that, that's just wherever we're like, if we're bored, Brilliant. we're like, oh, let's just go look at like Gollum clips on his TikTok. And it's Brilliant. like, I love that. There's always, there's, with every like failure with a, of a game like this, one person wins. Some person wins just, but he's not even going like, oh, this game sucks. This is shit. This is why he's just he's trying rapping. to get through it. He's just trying to beat it. It's yeah. It's, he's it's just playing it, trying to beat it. It is. It's as depressing, as hilarious <sighs> as it is to watch. Cause it's like, I, I remember, I think it was Asmund gold was streaming or I want to say it was Asmund. It was, it was one of the, the top dogs was, twitch or whatever mm -hmm. and they were streaming gollum and like their the the title of their stream was quote like let's finish this piece of shit and be done with it and i was like <laughs> wow i was like but that's rough. in 2023 how if especially I'm that, that game got released i, I really am but why how how is it how they know it's not done they know oh, yeah they know they, they're playing it i'm assuming they're testing it as they're playing it there's no way that got that like went through testing phase unscathed. So I just, so I don't know. Cause you always see people saying it's like, you know, people like developing games and like, you always hear that it's the, you know, the higher up executives, the ones who like, you know, aren't in control of it or like the publishers, the ones who are just, you know, only focused on the bottom line are the ones that cause games to be like this. And it's like, you know, I don't know if that's true or if that's just the way that the developers are being trying to like, you know, shift the focus off them. But it's like there, there is a disconnect somewhere in the development. And I don't know where it's at. But but how it's like, can you sign off? Like there is, there's know. someone in charge of whether the thing gets put on the shelves or not, you know, the <laughs> digital I... shelves and, and they, you signed off. Yeah. And then not only did you sign off, but you had the audacity to go, we'll release it. Maybe people won't notice. Well, it's like one of what? my favorite like trends. Like I know we were talking about the Dan's gaming, but it's like, have you seen like the, the trends where people will have like Gollum gameplay with like Crash Bandicoot music playing over it? Dude, the scene where it's running, Gollum's oh my God, running it's... from the spider. It it's... looks like it's... a platformer from N64. I when I saw that at first like because I know exactly what clip you're talking about I remember when I saw that I was like what game is this and then I saw that that was Gollum and I was like wow I was like I couldn't even tell you what game it was off the initial I thing th like, I thought it was hot do you remember the game The Hobbit for like the, the original Hobbit. Xbox I think it was the original Xbox or maybe PS2 it's called The Hobbit I never played that one no I usually the Lord of the Rings games I played back then were the ones like you know Return of the King and the Two Towers those movie tie-in ones those games mm -hmm. smacked by the way uh yeah those games are the Hobbit one though. Let me, I'll uh it's 2003 I'll send you the the Wikipedia yeah because it's like damn I'm like I'm, I'm kind of upset that I missed I remember okay I remember seeing that that artwork but no I never played that game look at this image I'm about to send you sorry listeners I don't have the image for you but the image I just sent, it looks exactly <laughs> like Gollum. I don't know if you can make like, I don't That's, know if you have an artwork dedicated for your podcast, but you should just make this the, the image. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So I do have cover art um, for the show. You're right though. No, that's, that's, that, that's really funny. But look at it. it yeah. I'm it, sorry. It, and that's from what? 2003. Three. So 20 years ago. And three. yeah, it doesn't look much different it, than fucking Three. Gollum. 
I, so I cannot wait to. Um, I need to save this image. I'm gonna show like my coworkers and like <laughs> everyone who I've talked about the Hobbit with. I'm gonna be like, hey, check this out. I, I'm not, I'm just gonna show them the picture with no context, and I bet they'll be like, is this Gollum? Just be like, dude, look how crazy this image from Gollum looks. They won't even. I guarantee they won't even question. They'll be like, yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just from the main Wikipedia page, but basically, to anybody listening, it just looks exactly like the Gollum game if you aren't plugged into what's going on with that game right now um it got released somehow with magic That's a great way to put it it got released first of all it's frankly i'm sorry but it's a concept no nobody that i'm aware of was asking for yeah i remember even when it was announced i was just kind of like okay like i love lord of the rings like i'm all for lord of the rings games but even when it was initially announced i was just like okay cool like why 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 like y'all could have given us like a battle for middle earth 3 that would have been sick i like i'm thinking of any other way you could do a lord of the rings adventure game and i don't know all the other different ways you could have done it might have been better like not even not even using this hobbit game as reference but it's like you know even just go back a few years and look at like shadow of war and shadow of mordor and it's so good they're so good. They're they're they play well. They're optimized well. Massive open worlds, like an in-depth nemesis system. And it's like, look at those compared to Gollum. And it's like, because Shadow of Mordor, that was the first one, right? Mordor or War? Uh, Mordor was the first one. Mordor, I think. I think so too. And it's like that came out in 2014, I believe, or 2015, one of those. And it's like, look at that game compared to Gollum that came out in May of 2023. And it's like, like you said, there's no excuse. It is 2014. I, dude, I would have loved, okay, I would have loved a Lord of the Rings game that played a little bit like Civilization, where you're That'd like kind of taking cool. territories, you can go into real-time combat, you know, kind of like a Total War, like Total War Lord of the Rings type thing. So like, my, my trying to take guy. territories and like conquer Middle Earth, essentially. My buddy who I do the, the podcast with, he's a big Rome Total War fan. Like, that's one of his games. There is an overhaul for Total War that turns it into like Middle Earth, and he's like, That's "It great. is." He's like, "Dude, it's so cool." Imagine that though, like a civilization style. You could just simulate battles, or you know, and you're you're just in the you're in the world you're in the map. Um, yeah, and it's like you know you've got enough factions because you know you could have dwarves, elves, humans. You know, if you wanted to, like hobbits, you could even go like ants, orcs, or that'd be that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, there's so there's so many options there. You could do Isengard. You could do um you know you could it's like there's an insane amount of lore that you can use there's as a reference bunch of sex to... yeah totally and sex. sex what sex okay okay i was about to be like i don't sex. know what game you're talking about man but uh sex <laughs> that's a that's a dangerous like sections, word without the tons the of sex of it. it's gonna be lit uh new lord of the rings rated x for excellent <clears throat> um it would probably do be better than Gollum. let's be real I, okay so Again, I don't understand, and I like. I, I just don't get it, man. Like, I don't understand. Is there someone pushing it? That sh- you know, someone going, just push it out. We can't keep paying for. This. Um, I swear, with instances like that, it's got to be an executive. It's got to be someone in the publisher, like a higher up executive, probably someone closely related to like the finance department because they're probably you know running numbers being like hey we've spent this much you know every delay costs us this much more we need to recoup our our funds somehow that's the only thing i can think of because i'd like like games are expensive to make let's be real like Mm -hmm. you know and it's like you know i'm sure you know these companies really don't like you know let's say you know it takes five years to make a game well they're paying you know out of pocket for five years so it's like you know i'm sure the quicker they can stop doing that and start paying with, you know, profits, the more inclined I think they're willing to do so. So it's like, I know everyone's like corporate greed, this corporate greed, that, but it's like, eh, maybe <laughs> like, well, I don't, but at the same time, it's like, you know, like, are you that out of touch to where you realize like, Hey, if we release it as is, we're not even going to sell it. So it's like, I, I really don't know, man. It's okay. So, I looked at I looked at who made it. 
Uh, it's a German game developer. Okay. Dalek Entertainment? D-A-E-D-A-I or D-A-L-I-C? Mm-hmm. Dalek Entertainment? Um, they say they got about 100 employees. So, let's see how long it took to make this thing. I'd love to, I'd be interested to see. I'm just looking at Steam because when you said that, I just went to Daedalic thing. I just clicked their thing and it's like, you know, other games are there. They did Barrow Trauma. That was a, that's a pretty fun little, um, well, they were the publisher. I'll put it that way for Barrow Trauma, which is a very interesting strategy game. Very well, bad at it. The only other thing I can think of is maybe because of the franchise. So maybe because Lord of the Rings. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, so maybe this is like, maybe they're on a super strict time frame. Like, hey, you've got the rights for three years or something like that. I like, guess, they, yeah, because it's like, you know, yeah, licensing and stuff. You know, I don't I don't know the ins and outs and like legalization of all that stuff or whatever. So it's like, you know, it's not like you have a license forever. So yeah, that, that could be a huge part of it. You're right. I didn't even think about that. I, I don't know how that works. And... But damn. <laughs> no, it's bad. I could you know, could we convince Tana to play it? You know, he played Red Fog. Do you think we can bully him into playing? I think if we all purchased it for him. <laughs> He'll set up a GoFundMe as I think GoFundMe. I think if we could get five or six people to put in five, ten bucks <laughs> and gift it. Oh man. I think we should do that and not say anything. And just gift him. He'd be so mad. Would it? <laughs> He'd probably, because it's like, because if you gifted it to him, it's like, you know, not that he has to, but it's like, you know, if someone gives you, you know, gives you a gift for like stream, it's kind of, you know, a nice obligation to play it. So it would kind of force his hand that he'd be like, hey, we got you this for your stream. So chop, chop. <laughs> oh, imagine? that's. Oh, man, that's actually, that's such a great idea. I'm how, not even. How much is it on Steam? I don't want to. It, I know he won't play it on PC though, because one, it's optimized like crap, and he doesn't like to stream games that he plays on PC. It's it's how much is it? Forty nine ninety nine. It's fifty bucks still. <laughs> yep. I I, I want to for the gaming gone weird show tomorrow, the live show. I'd love to gift it to. You. Oh my god! Oh my god! Please do it. I think it would be. I think it'd be so fun. It'd be so wrong, but it would be so funny. Oh man, I just um it, it it's this and Redfall before this, and it there's just a nonstop string of unreleased nonsense games. And I I wish we could see the driving force because I don't and maybe maybe it happens all the time and we're just more privy to it when we're younger, but it seems like it's happening more often now than it used to. I feel like it not when I feel like. No, like it didn't really happen when we were younger because it's like, you know, when we were younger, like, you know, now since like everything's online, you know, they can just release a, sh a shit game and fix it with updates, you know, back, back like when we were kids, you know, on like the original Xbox and PS2 and stuff like that, it's like they really couldn't, you know, just push out, you know, update after update after update. Like they kind of had to get it right from the get go. And then, you know, maybe if there was something really broken that they didn't get, you know, do a hot fix for that or something. But it's like, you know, like, you kind of got what you got at that point. And I feel like that was good because, you know, it pretty much was like, hey, you either release the game in its entirety or this game's going to suck and there's nothing we can do about it. Do you think the digital libraries have affected this? Because you don't have to wait or plan or take the risk on spending money on production of physical products? Probably, but if we're going to talk about that, why are we not paying a discount for digital products? That's something me and my buddy always talk about. Because just like the federal government, Stu, we already have your money. Why would we give it back? Fair point. <laughs> God damn it. We already have it. We don't need it back. <sighs> uh, why are we paying for the digital copy? Well, well, Stu, you know, there's server costs and, uh, you know, I just... I would What's You're already crazy. willing to some spend games, sixty dollars, so we might as well keep it at sixty dollars. You know, what's crazy is some games. If you look at it when you buy them digitally, it's like you don't necessarily buy the game; you just kind of buy the rights to play. It. And like in technicalities, they can revoke that access whenever they want. And it's like that's cool. That's that's rad. 
Oh, Thanks. when you actually own... Uh, I don't even... So you just... Yeah, what it's are you like doing? You're essentially just yeah. buying the right to play the game. You're not actually buying the game. You're just buying the right to play it. And it's huh. like, that's cool. I don't know, man. So, I, I mean, I guess it, it would make games easier to release. Like, yeah. Because there's a lot less waiting up front. So maybe that time of like, hey, well, hey, guys, we don't have to do this all this extra stuff. So, you know, this this process of printing physical copies and distributing, since that takes three months, that means we can finish games three months faster, right? Like, I could see yeah. someone trying to do that logic. I guess. I mean, it's also... Ah, fuck, I had an idea and it just completely slipped my mind. I also, like, kind of related to that, I've seen people kind of say that, like, you know, supporting, you know, not necessarily digital, but essentially supporting, like, early access style games has kind of, like, led to this because it's, like, we're just so used to paying for un unfinished products that it's, like, it's kind of become the norm at this point. Oh, how gross is that? And it's, like, I, I'm torn because it's, like, you know, Early access, the 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 premise behind early access when you know, early access first started on like you know Steam and stuff like that was like you know you do get in early, you know support the game early so that the developers can you know use that funding to update the game to its entirety. Now I just feel like people are like, fuck it, you can move in the game, just push it out on early access and we'll update it later. And it's like, it so kind of sucks. I mean, granted, I also like I said, I you know the Starship Troopers game that's an early access game um drift with the game i got that's an early, a lot of games that i play are considered early access games so it's like you know i'm like oh yeah this is the problem as i continue to buy them but i mean i'd rather pay 20 dollars for an incomplete game than if 60. it's an early access game do you think there should be a limit like if it's an if your game is in early access, you can't charge more than twenty dollars. I'd be fine with that, but and then like you know, as a game is like completed, like you pay more than to like pay the full sixty, let's say, or like do you just mean like a twenty dollar flat rate fee? Like if I'm Steam, they're never gonna do this because they want money. But it's like, man, in a perfect world, if there was a if there was a game that was if you release it as early access you can't charge more than this amount that's like a way to protect consumers <laughs> protect consumers that's a funny concept yeah but still look, look at you trying I to be dream. consumer friendly look at you trying to be all consumer friendly we don't do <sighs> that here what, what, yeah. what is it you said earlier they already have your money <laughs> god so true I was just reading this review look at the review <laughs> Scholar review. It's the number one liked. We hate is it. I love that. <laughs> wow, and the developer responded. The developer responded. Oh no, the developer actually responded to it. That's they responded bad. to the, the review. We hate is it. That's bad. Like the developers, like do they? They had to have done that as a meme, right? Uh, I think the game got released. I think it got dumped on immediately. Uh, and for a long time, and then I think someone at their company was tasked with going, "Hey, I need you to write ten different responses. And just I need you to go it. into every comment on our page, all 246 of these, 279 now, and paste each answer into each one, and link whatever our upcoming patch notes are, we um, and play. Please don't uh, refund." Can we talk about also how like there's only 278 reviews? That's nuts. Like even when games are like completely garbage, you know, there might be there might be like, you know, thousands of reviews. That means that like there's just so many people that just didn't even buy this game outright if there's only 278 reviews. On a Lord of the Rings game, by the way. Yeah. A franchise I that you said, you know what? We're going to take our try at one of the most beloved pieces of modern day. And I'm going to call it art. Art. And we're going to take a crack at it. And wow. Yes. It is. Gollum is a, is a stain on the Lord of the Rings name, without a doubt. Oh, my. Uh, the comments are. <laughs> the comments are great. 
The comments are hilarious. Comment. I love having schizo art. Oh my god. <laughs> this one wrote 40, 41% of people who own this game have jumped into lava. 27% of people who who own this game have finished chapter two. <laughs> Jesus. You know what's really funny is like every um, now and again, I do it when I'm bored, but it's like every now and again, it's really fun to just if you're ever bored, anyone listening to this, if you're ever bored, just go through Steam and usually look through like, you know, big name or popular games. Just read reviews. It's always really fun to just read so Steam reviews the internet, if you're bored. The Steam reviews remain undefeated. They do. They do. Like Let's see, I'm on, I'm on my Steam page right now, and, you know, Killing Floor 2 is on the top, which I know is, like, a very beloved game, so it's like, you know, I'm sure that some of the comments are great. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can shit on this game all day long. Look, I, I'll say this, I say this every pod, whenever we, this type of subject comes up, any, any show, I want games to win, okay? I want them to win, I want them to do well, I wish every game was great, because we win if that's the case. I understand if there are bugs, it's impossible to not have those. I understand that. I know that there are bugs. I know that there are like fixes that that need to be made. But you look at a game like um, like Dredge. Did you ever play Dredge? I didn't, but I heard it was really good. I played Dredge. I I one hundred percented it. Did the full completionist Damn. run. Got everything. It's a complete game. That not once like did it crash. Not once did it crash. Not once did I have any kind of bugs. Not once was there an issue of any kind. Like, it's a complete game, and that's a team of. Uh, I want to say it's four. Nice. They built the game. They did all the artwork for the game. They did the music for the game. Like a, a super small team. Yeah. There's um. And it's like a- if they can do it, you have. You you know you have quadruple you know five x ten x a hundred x the amount of employees how 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 yeah going off games like that as well too there's a a game it came out in 2013 and it started off as an Xbox Xbox 360 arcade game I believe it's called Dust and Elysian Tail and it's like it's like a Metroidvania styled game or whatever and it's like you know the artwork and like animation stuff was just done by one guy. Like he wanted to make, you know, like a animated series, but then made a game. So it's like, you know, he did all the animations and artworks and did like a good chunk of the voice acting. And it's like, you know, there's just a couple people that made this and it's like, this game's fucking awesome. Like, I love it. And it's like, yeah, but then, yeah, you've got, you know, hundreds of people working on other games and it's like, they just suck. I look mean, at, another prime example is look at Call of Duty. I mean, it's I know it's kind of become the trend of shit on Call of Duty, but it's like they they are kind of the golden standard of just like, hey, let's just look at bad development. Look at Stardew Valley. One person. Is Stardew Valley one person? I knew it had one to have been a small person. Team. One person learned how to design games, did all the music, did all the artwork, did everything. Solo. Uh, that that whoever made Thirty Valley, they got to be rolling in money. Concerned ape, I'm pretty sure. And now he's working on his second game. It took him ten. Uh, I want to say it took him ten years to make it. And, and it's like I'm pretty sure Thirty Valley is like one of the highest rated games like on all of Steam because it's like if you go to it on Steam, it's like overwhelmingly positive with like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of reviews. Yeah, because it's amazing. Actually, that's a really cool thing. You're right. Stardew Valley is the number three all-time rated game on Steam. How, how do you check the all-time? Is What is number one? Undertale? According to this, I'm just looking at Steam ranking, which is the top 250. What do you think? I'll give you... Okay. Start, according to this website, Steam 250, Stardew Valley is number three. Terraria... Is number two. What do you think number one is? I'd have to say Undertale. It is not Undertale. Oh wow! Think more of like the realm of like Half Life. Maybe I'm saying this wrong. So Half Life? <laughs> no, not Half Life. Uh, it's not Half Life. But I'll say this. Uh, actually, I won't say anything. <laughs> 
What do you think? Damn. Number one is okay. It is first person. Let's say okay. That. All right. Aries mod. No. Oh, it's the highest rated game. According first to person. this website. Higher rated than Stardew and Terraria, and I guess Undertale. Okay, I'll put it this way: it's a puzzle game, first-person puzzle game. Oh, like Portal. One. Yep. That nah, that makes sense. Yep. I, I I didn't even think about that. Is it? Did I get that right? Half Life World? Am I making that up? Yeah. I mean, it's it's similar. Yeah. Is it? Is it like it? Okay. I was thinking I don't of think that. I don't think it's. I don't think it's part of the Half Life world, but the gun. The, for whatever the gun like reminds me of that the portal gun and the gravity gun from half-life are pretty much the same yeah okay okay yeah portal 2 is the highest rated game according to this website where's undertale on that list undertale's got to be top five then um i mean who knows if this website's even good or not but um i'll say it is not in the top 10 wow okay so it must go off of a it must go off of ratio because I just went to Portal 2 on Steam and Portal 2 is 98% of the 281,000 and Stardew was 98% of 480,000. So Portal 2 has a higher ratio of positive reviews, but I think Stardew has more positive reviews. Yeah, and I'm on this website and this is the top 250 rated games on Steam. So it's going off of positive against negative reviews. Uh, okay, so yeah, I guess it. I guess that's the thing. Is like you know, is it going off of ratio? Is it going off numbers? Is it going off? Ba- so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Portal Two. So I'm on a different website. Portal Two is still there. The lists still have the same games, but they're in a different order. Saying, Hollow Knight's got to be like high up on those lists. So I imagine top ten in both of those. Left for Dead Two. Oh, that's that it. makes sense. Left 4 Dead 2 is a timeless classic. Banger. Like, I, I, I think, I truly think Left 4 Dead is like, because I still play Left 4 Dead to this day. I think Left 4 Dead 2 is like, it, you can never go wrong with it, ever. Yeah. Like, and you know, sometimes when me and friends are bored and we're just hanging in Discord, I'm like, y'all want to do a level of Left 4 Dead 2? And it's like, you know, almost always it's like, yeah, let's boot it up. It's Euro like, Truck Simulator 2. God, man, I forget about Sims. I forget how much <laughs> uh, how much like Sim games have a chokehold on their fan bases. It's so funny. Like I'm not into them, but it's like you know, and it's not even like you know, look up Euro Truck, America Truck Sim, Farming Simulator. This like simulators are always racing so simulators are super popular right now. Yeah, and I'm like, why? Why do these have like? Why are these always like so? So I mean, granted, also I'm like, I don't like Sims, and it's like. Uh, when I had Game Pass, I played like Power Wash Simulator, and it's like, yeah, that that game was like unhealthily addicting. Like I'd be like, yeah, I'm just gonna play this for five minutes, and I'm like, I have to get every last speck of dirt on like this playground. I'm like, okay, now I now I see how these games work. But it was fun. I liked it. Farming I think Simulator. The last sim 20... game I played. <sighs> Dude, Game Pass has been great. For getting trying a bunch of new stuff. Yeah, I like it. I just I, I just kinda hate that games rotate in and out of it. That's the only part that kinda sucks. But it's like I get it, you know, they kinda gotta, you know, recoup their funds. They can't just keep adding and adding and adding. Cause I was like, oh man, I want to go back and replay uh near automata and they took it off Game Pass and I'm like, well, shit. But that just means I'm gonna buy it on Steam because realistically i need to buy that game i will support that that developer forever that is one of my that is one of my all-time favorite games which one if no one if if, if no one's played it if no anyone listening hasn't played it give near automata a chance it is amazing near automata that's n-i-e-r colon a-u-t-o-m-a-t-a yep and what kind of- <laughs> Um, it's so it's made by Platinum Games. So, you know, Platinum Games are the people who, you know, did Bayonetta, Metal Gear Rising, Vanquish. So is this Square Onyx? Is, yeah, it's also Square Enix. And it's like, Enix. no, you're good. But it's like, it's, you know, on paper, like just looking at it, it's like an open world, like JRPG 
styled hack and slash game. But when you get into the story and every aspect of it, it is like an existential breakdown. It is amazing. So the story's good. Oh, that that game will that, uh, so it's weird. The game has five endings. It's it's weird. But that's Yoko Taro for you. And it's like the the way the fifth ending, like the true ending, like the ending sequence is like one of my favorite moments in like all of gaming history. It like there's something about the way it just makes you feel it, it's so fucking sick. I've been on like I've been on a near binge recently too. Are there so. several different games? There's near and then And then far. <laughs> oh man, that was Got terrible. him! So there's there's Automata and then like years ago there was a game called Near Gestalt and then a few years ago Near Replicant and then followed by like 20 different numbers I don't know came out which was like the prequel to Automata but it's like the Near games were also a spin-off of an old series called Drakengard um so yeah there's there's a lot of lore and story Yoko Taro's a uh, he's a character for lack of a better word and I say character, I kind of mean that because it's like he always wears like a mask or, you know, he's not himself. He doesn't like doing interviews. So if he does interviews, he either wears a mask or he does sock puppet interviews. So it's like when I say he's a character, I, I kind of mean hilarious. He's but it's like when you play his games, it's like the the dude is a visionary. Like he I don't know what it is, but it's like. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's something in the water, but it's like. There is no creativity that matches the creativity of a Japanese game developer. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is actually something I've wanted to talk about before. What what is it about the the content, the media, the games, the art that like coming out of Japan? Like what is it? Just I, I, like I was thinking about this. I'm like, it's a it's a place that's been around for a long, long time. Yeah. It's an old area as far Mm -hmm. as the world is concerned is it do you think it's just like okay when i talk to my friends who don't like anime or understand anime and not everyone has to be an anime fan i didn't start watching it until covid okay but dude like the fights the fight scenes in some of these shows and the level of animation in these shows and like how it like nuts. tickles your mat. It it makes your brain go. What is what? This is crazy. Like I could never imagine this. How do you like the stuff? I don't get it. I don't get like yeah, why I mean, why is such crazy stuff come out of? And I I don't mean crazy negatively. Like just it's like creative, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, but yeah. I'm the exactly. no, I'm the same way, and it's like you know I, I'm kind of relatively new ish to the anime because it's like I didn't really start watching anime until like Attack on Titan came out because it's like you know everyone was talking about it, and I was like, you know, I never really watched anime, and like I was talking to my coworkers at the time, and they were like, oh yeah, anime's you know well, yeah yeah I'll bring in some you know box sets and shows for you to watch, and of course they got me started watching Evangelion, which I am like a massive fan of, but it's like, even watching that, it's just like that. Like, how do you think of that show? Like, how, how do you think? I mean, Grant, I know it was a manga first, but it's like, how do you have that kind of just thought process to make that story? Like, I, I don't get it. And even like going to attack on Titan, it's like, you know, the, how, how the story, you know, I don't know if you've watched Attack on Titan or read it or anything. I've like watched that. a couple seasons. It's um, it's super heavy. It like is. I could never binge it really well. Like I'd watch an episode soon and just be like, okay, I feel like I need to take a walk. But it's like there's, it's like watching some of the stuff and it's like you know, you watch it and there's all these crazy twists and turns. And you're like, man, whoa. And then it's like if you rewatch it, you see all these like story beats laid out super early, and it's like kind of like one of my things it's like you know as a creator it's like how do you think of this so like how do you see like a big picture like this where you'll just put in like this small little detail or not and it's like hey this means nothing now but in like you know 50 um 50 comics later this will make sense like how i don't understand how y'all how they have like that just well, being able to tie up stuff like that it's nutty well, why is that's it always all been coming like, one of the Japan? craziest things why is i don't it, know what i mean not all of it but um, you know, there's Korean and, and that's why I'm like, I don't know if Chinese it's something in the water or what, well. but it's like, like their creativity is it's 
but it's leaps so and bounds ahead of ours. So... And I wonder, <clears throat> I wonder too if it just be, be, because it comes from, you know, it's like different religions are practiced, different histories, different folklore. You know, like, yeah, different ways of life, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, environment contributes to all that, but god damn, like they do horror super well in the super disgusting scary movies super well they do what's great kind of going off that like spinning off of that like korea's kind of been killing it in terms of like zombies and it's like you know exactly like sorry and not just japan i mean the whole region really yeah the whole area but it's like yeah kind of going off what you're saying it's like you know it's like they got horror and it's like you know korea's kind of been you know doing zombie stuff and it's like they've all been good and it's like you know the zombie craze kind of died you know 10 15 years ago and like they're still kind of doing it today and it's still working it's like dude how <laughs> I, I, dude, the first time i watched um Jujutsu kaisen I, I don't know have you watched that at all i haven't watched that one yet no i've <sighs> okay. seen clips of it though there's like the fight scenes in that are just so i'm like dude where's the american animation and why does it all have to be pixar and so oh, I, what I saw a great video of these people talking about um, it's like it's such a shame that the Oscars don't include more foreign films when it comes to animation because when you say or anime, anime there's general. a stigma right like when you say yeah. anime there's a stigma and it's like no 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 it's just animation that's not you know with the fish <laughs> like it's yeah no you know no disrespect to to Nemo but it's like why does it all have to be musicals. Why can't yeah. it be? Did I have, okay, have you seen the movie Memories? No, I have not. No, it's free on Tubi right now. It's it's three short stories, as one movie, and they're okay. all very very different. Um, and I was and it's it's anime. I would call it, um, or just a Japanese director. I'm pretty sure it's Japanese director. Um, I was like, this is the some of the heaviest, like, I'm like this easily could have been some, something over here, but it's just Holy never Christ. included. They just don't include it. It says the anime anthology classic from the creator of Akira. That that has me sold. Dude, it's it's amazing. I couldn't believe. It. But I also really like the the late nineties kind of that or that nineties style of animation. Oh yeah, dude. Me me and my coworker we talk about it all the time. Like that nineties style of anime, there's something so stylish about it that like even today just holds up so well it's so good i i I highly recommend it as someone who's seen to completion less than 20 like 20 i'll give it a look i mean one i like anthologies like anthologies i think are always fun because i like short stories and it's made by the person who made akira like uh, okay that's that's two things i like so i'm sold it's super intense there is about i mean each like show is probably 30 or probably like 45 minutes ish. So you can watch one and then call it. Um, I I highly recommend it. If you get some time, some downtime, because you don't, you don't have to finish the whole thing in one sitting. Yeah. Um, That one's crazy. I just don't, I want to know why like all this such, it's like so high level. It really is coming from that, that part of the world. And I'm just like, dang America, but we're also younger. Like the country's much, much younger. And we have so much like borrowed. It's there's so much influence from so many different types of people. So it's maybe that plays into it. I just want to know why. Like it's so curious. I don't know. Well, if if we ever find out why, you know, I'd love to see our take on it because it's like yeah, Japanese like art and media and stuff. It's like and Air Asian media and art. So and good. Shows and it's like timeless. It really is. It's kind of crazy. It's so dope. Um. I don't even know how we got here, but uh, yeah, same. I'm glad we're not just dumping all over Gollum, but I fucked that game. <laughs> <laughs> really, to tie it all together, Halo needs a BR. Okay, uh, you know I'm glad we were able to close the loop on that one. Doesn't it? You know, they, they... It needs it, man. You know what? I'll put it this way: I saw people talking about if Halo does a BR, they need to have it where it's ODST troopers like drop yeah. potting into the yes. map. I love that. That would idea. be cool. Yes. But everyone's like, oh no, it's gonna be Spartans. I'm like, oh man, yeah, I can't wait to, you know, just you know, BR someone across it the map. Be, it would be like much cooler if it Scott wasn't because of his shields. It would yeah. be much cooler if it wasn't a Spartan, I think. Or like make him make it you play as grunts. That'd be cool. Oh my god. 
have a have a a uh, covenant only. <laughs> That'd be rad. <laughs> oh, that'd be so sick. Um, oh yeah. Well, man, I feel like that's a pretty natural place to to wrap it up. Um, yeah, for right, sure. Right at the hour mark. Uh, I genuinely appreciate the time, man. I know it's late on on a weekday here, but uh, remind the people uh, where they can find you, any projects that you're working on, or any you know anything that you want to promote. Um, like I said, all my all my social media is like YouTube, Switch, Twitter, TikTok. Everything is you know LOL Case Stew at LOL Case Stew slash LOL Case Stew. Whatever the platform is, just put LOL Case Stew at the end of it, and you'll probably find me. I need to get more back on streaming. I usually only stream every now and again, but that's also just because you know having a kiddo makes streaming a little bit more difficult usually sure. i get interrupted by her but not that's saying that's like a bad thing but it's like you know when she's down for a nap you know if she's restless you know it's not really fun me leaving the stream every five minutes so i'm just like i'll just play games on my own but i plan on getting more back into it and then um yeah i i bully if you ever if you want to see the most of me go to Nick Tanner's stream and you can find me in there bullying him whenever he's live. That's, that's where you'll find me the most. And that's, uh, at you love Nick Tanner on Twitch. Yes, sir. Um, well, cool, man. Well, you sent you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the time and, uh, thank you guys for listening again. Uh, you. this podcast will probably go up on YouTube within, um, YouTube and anywhere you listen to your podcasts. Um, I'm going to say it's the 6th of June right now, so it should be, up and running by the time you hear this will probably be closer to like the 15th somewhere in the middle um but thank you guys for listening again i'm your host peter aka not ghost stories on all things socials and i will catch you on the next episode bye